everybody. How are you? It's Leslie from Scrap and Life Away. And today I'm here to teach you how to do um, a DIY pamphlet stitch signature to go into a handmade journal and or book. Now this is a uh, watercolor paper that I have cut down um, to seven and a half by six. And I did that using my Fiskars paper cutter, paper trimmer, whichever term you would like to use it. And remember this, this was from the collaboration that we did from Gina Ahern's, Gina Ahern's, good grief, Gina Ahern's design team. We did a, we did a collaboration um, with Shannon and we all designed our own custom keeper. So I want to make signatures to go inside of this. And I did not want to use what I had in here, which was just plain computer paper because computer paper just doesn't hold media well, what, whatever media it is. Um, and I'll make sure also to link in the description below um, the link to um, the video where I did this, where I made this, designed this cover. Really cool. It turned out really neat. I'm a big vintage freak, and I think this turned out really cool. But anyway, I've cut this all up, and I've I've got it into groups of four. So there's so I have four groups of four, which means I'll have four signatures to go in here. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to find the center of my page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, oh, it's upside down, my Tim Holtz ideology ruler. Now, the reason I like this is because I need to fold this in half. So I need to find, now with, I'm sorry, let me go back. With this here, the zero is in the center. So this helps me to figure out the center of my paper. And I know this is upside down but that's okay. It helps me. If I go to the four, it's not centered. So I want to keep going until, yeah, it looks like my center is going to be right here, which means this end is three and three quarters, and this is three and three quarters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and try and keep my head out of the way. Just put a little mark there. It didn't go through. Maybe I need to make my lead longer. Here we go. Three and three quarters lets me know that this is the halfway point. There. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scoreboard now, let me tell you something about the scoreboard. First of all, um, I have linked on my Amazon store um, all the products that I am using in here. Um, this is a Martha Stewart scoreboard. And I do not believe that Martha Stewart, I could be wrong. So don't quote me on this, but I could not find a Martha Stewart scoreboard um, when I searched through Amazon. But what I did do is I did find a scoreboard that was very similar to this, and it was um, less expensive. It was um, through EK Success. So I did link that in um, the description below. And all of the items that I use, all the supplies that I use, um, I will put a link in the description below. There'll be the name of the product and then a link next to it. So that way, if it's something that you see that you would want to purchase or that you need um, in your supply, like even this bone folder, I put a link in there on where to get one of those. If um, You know, not everyone has direct access to get to a Michaels or a Joann's or a Seymour or whatever the... Um, Whatever it is. All right, I'm going to score this right here. 
at three and three quarters. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that to all of my um, all of my papers, all of these. So when I am done scoring all of these, we'll be back. I don't think you need to watch me score all these. It'd be really kind of boring. So I'll be right back. Okay, I have gone ahead and scored all of these right down the center. I know it's probably hard to see where that score mark is. I'm trying. There's a little bit of a glare. Sorry, guys. Maybe see it better on this side. Well, anyway, trust me, there's a score mark there. Makes it easier to fold this in half. And then I'm just going to take my bone folder and drop it. <laughs> and I'm just going to go up and down like that. And it then gives me just a really nice crease. And I'm going to go ahead and go through and do that to all of these. And then I'll be back when I'm done with that. Hello there. Okay, I have folded each of these um, papers. I've put them into a stack of four. So there's four stacks of four. So there's 16 pages, 16 um, pieces all together, which I can't do my math right now. I'm not in teaching school right now, so I don't need to know math. I just figured it out with calculator. <laughs> anyway, what we need to do right now is we need to um, mark where the holes are going to go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set these other signatures. Oh, and by the way, each one of these is considered a signature. This is a signature signature this is they're all signatures all right doesn't matter whether it's just one page or whether it's four pages doesn't matter this is a signature okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one sheet away just so I have something to work with now remember I said that this the measurements of this are seven and a half by six so I know that three inches as you can see right here, three inches on either side. So I know right where my middle is going to be. So that zero, I don't know if you can see this. I'll try and bring it in. I know there's a bit of a glare. I apologize. I'm doing the best I can. I can get it to focus. All right, here's my zero, and over here is three inches, and over to here is three inches, so I know that that zero is going to be my center. So I want to mark that as my center. And I think what I'm going to do, I want this, you, I need to put three holes in this to sew with. So I think I want my outside holes to be um, three quarters. So I want to put them at two and two. Yeah. Let's just do that. No. You know, I just can't make up my mind. I want to come in three quarters. So right here. Three quarters in. One, two, three quarters in. Okay, so there is where I'm going to make my holes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this here like this. And make sure that that's marked pretty well there. And there, sorry if you can't see. I'm trying really hard to keep it all in frame. Now, what I'm going to do is do the best I can to get these all together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, how about, pull you out a little bit so you don't get, like, my fat arms in the way. <laughs> okay. Let's hope these bull nose clips fit. If not, I have to find my other ones. I think these will be all right, though. Maybe. Come on, Mama, get on there. Is 
biggest thing is that I want these to be as straight as up and down here as possible. I want my seams to be straight. These sometimes push them in. No, it's just not quite the way I want it. So sometimes you just need to fiddle with it. Kind of part of the fun of it, actually. Come on now. That was pretty good. Right now, what I'm going to do um, with this ruler, it has a side that has a metal strip on here, like a metal piece of metal. That's great for when you're lining things up and you're going to be cutting with a knife. So you're not cutting this. But if you need to draw a straight line, this kind of has a sloped edge and it lets you, um, it makes it easier for drawing lines. But I'm just going to line that up. I'm just going to take my pencil, come across like that, and come across like that, and break the lead. <laughs> Flip that around. And do that. All right. So now I've got everything is lined up exactly the way it should be. Can you see that? Yep, you can see that. Okay. Now I'm going to get these ready to poke holes in them. I'm going to show you how I do that. All right, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this one, I'm going to turn it inside out like that, so I can see my holes right there. Now, the one thing you're going to want, you're going to want to remember, even though, the, you know, it's a three quarters inch here, three quarters inch here, and that's in the middle, I still want to bring this back outside. Because I always want to remember, this is my top, and this is my bottom. It's very important. So actually, I'm just going to mark a T here and a B here. And um, I can always erase that because it's in pencil. This is my stamp pad. As you can tell, it's well-loved. I've talked about this in other videos. All it is is... Um, packing from um, packaging from things that I've received in the mail. I just glue them down to a piece of wood that um, was from Michael's that I repurposed. And I'm going to use it that way. Glued it down with some Fabri Tac, maybe some E6000, I don't remember. But all right, I want to I want to make sure that this is in pretty good. Um, and straight and again you can use your bullnose clips to hold them in place because you really don't want them to move too much like that all right see looks pretty good not going anywhere I'm just gonna lay that down I'm gonna take my pokey tool and I'm just gonna poke right through one two, three. All right. And remember, I'm 
just going to do this again like here like this. And if you kind of hold it up to the light, you can see that you've gotten it right through. You're good to go. Sometimes you can just poke it from this side just to make sure that it's good. We'll deal with this where the edges are uneven. We'll deal with that after we sew them together. And don't freak out when I say that we're going to sew them together. It's not a big deal. It's really very simple. All right, I'm going to go through and do the same thing to these three other signatures, and I'll be right back. Okay, now I already have these all punched, and they're also all labeled top and bottom. So I have four signatures here, and they are ready to be sewn. Like I said, don't freak out. It's not that hard. If I can do it, anybody can do it. What you're going to need is, this is waxed linen thread. It's very smushy. See, it's it's like covered in beads. It's in wax, probably beeswax. I don't know. But what you're going to do, to know how much you need, you're going to take one two-ish. I always like to take a little bit more. Rather have too much than too little. And then snip that off. And then I usually like to use a darning needle. I don't have one. Ooh. But what you definitely want is a needle that has a pretty big eye. You see that? The eye's pretty big. Um, especially for those of us that have old eyes. And like I said, you usually would want to use like a darning needle. This tip is pretty sharp, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. Right now, what I'm going to do, I can see that my holes are all pretty, pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and use a bullnose clip here to keep this side. And then I'm going to use, where'd they go? Here they are. I need three all together. Another one here. And these you can just pick up at your local um, you know, office supply store. Okay. So here's my middle hole. And then I have one here and one here. Oh, and you know what? Before I start this, I want to show you something. I know this can be difficult to find. I have linked, um, I have linked uh, in the description to where you can get this on Amazon, to my Amazon store. Um, there is a link there for it. Um, it comes in two different colors. This is a darker one um, that I use, like if I'm using a craft color paper. Or if I want this to look a little bit more vintagey, but this is, like I said, they come in two different colors. Actually, you could probably get a few different colors, but this is the one I primarily use. But should you not be able to get this, many of us used to do cross stitch or have some kind of um, cross stitch thread or what do they call it, skein, or whatever. You can take this, cut this off, put it away. This is called quilter's wax, okay? Basically what it is, it's wax inside of this little plastic container. And this just flips back on like that. And what you could do is take your thread and run it through. This will then wax your thread.
So then that gives you wax thread. Now it might not be as strong as a linen, but you know, if you're just putting together, um, you know, just junk journals, um, this works just fine. I've also linked this in my store if you would rather purchase something like this to help give it a little more, give your thread a little more strength. Okay. So I think everybody's probably got tons of that. Or if you just want to double up some sewing thread and throw it, put it through there, I'm sure you can do the same thing. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go, how do I want this to go? Usually I go this way. But I think I want the knot to be on the outside, not the inside. So I'm going to go in. Normally I would go in through this way, through the middle this way from the inside. But because I want my knot to be on the outside, I don't want it to be seen. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to bring this through just like this. Now the one thing I'm going to do in order to save myself some headache, I'm going to take this tail. Some people um, clip it with a, you know, with just some tape. I just kind of pull it over and take a bull nose clip and hold it. Now it's not going anywhere. So now you can go either direction you want. I'm going to now go this way. And pull that through. And make sure that's good and tight. And then I'm going to come See, I'm doing it backwards, so it's good, it's a little confusing to me. All right, so now I'm going to bring this. See, I came up through here. I'm going to go down through here. I'm going to bring this all the way up. I'm going to come all the way up through here. And pull. I want to give it a little tug, make sure that's good and tight. I kind of just hold that with my finger. I'm going to go back in through the middle. Now here's the tricky part. You don't want to come, you don't want to split that thread. So you want to make sure this is on one side. You want you know, this to come up on the other. You notice it's a little loose. That's all right. We'll, we'll tighten it up in a minute. Okay. So I'm going to take my needle off here. I'm going to leave these on. I'm going to take this off here. Okay, now. And now all I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull that. I'm going to put my finger there. And I'm just going to tie a knot. Pretty good, pretty tight, pretty good. And the good thing about using the wax thread is that it pretty much sticks to itself, okay? So then I'm just going to clip this off here, clip this off here. Kind of put these together like that, smush them together. 
I'm going to close this. Take this off. Oops. How about if I took both full nose things off? There we go. Okay. So here's my top. Here's my bottom. Here's my signature sewn together all nice and neat. And the knot, like I said, is going to be on the outside. You're not going to see it because it's going to be in the book, in the book. So let me get my other signatures sewn together and we'll be right back. All right. I've gotten all of my signatures all sewn. And they do look pretty good if I do say so myself. Now what we're going to do is we're going to trim our edges. Now they're going to be a little off inside the book just by the way they lay. But what I want to do is I want these to be semi pretty straight. So remember how I said that this ruler has a metal edge on it that's good for cutting? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up as best I can. I'm trying to make sure I keep my head out of the way here. I'm going to try and line this up as best I can. And I want to hold that just like that. I'm going to take a mark there and a mark there. The reason I did that is that's going to let me know right where to move those Right, we're going to move these bullnose clips too, because what that's going to do is going to help to keep this from moving. Not quite on the line. I want to move it just a smidge more. Okay, so just like that. So now this has something to rest against, plus. I'm going to turn it this way just a little bit so it's easier. I'm going to hold this as firmly as I can. And then I'm just going to slice. And it's not going to slice it all at once. But it will slowly go through all your pieces and it will give you a nice even edge almost there Good. Well, a few edges here that are off just a little bit. Well, let's just turn this around. Let's kind of pull those off. There you go. Oh, that looks pretty good. Now this edge here is a little wonky. That's right, I can fix that with a pair of scissors. But now we have a nice clean edge to our book, our signature. And then we can just take this and erase my lines. Okay, I'm going to do this to the other signatures and I'll be back. All right, all done. My edges are all nice and clean and even. Now remember, when I put these into the custom keeper, because of the way they lie, they're probably gonna end up looking something like this, but that's okay. That's kind of the way I want it. So let's go ahead and load them in. And just, um. And FYI, 
you don't need to clean the edges if you don't want to. I'm that just happens to be the way I like to do it. Um, do you need to use a wax linen? No. Um, I just happen to like to use that because it's it gives it's strong, and I tend to be um, a little bit difficult on um, a little bit hard on my journals. Straighten these down. So there's our first one. And here comes our second one. Remember, T and B, top and bottom. And let's do this one. Does it matter? Let's do this one. So sometimes you need to wiggle them in a little bit. That's okay. Now Shannon's, when she sends these to you, um, when you purchase one, it comes with elastic to do these. I chose to use the twine because the twine um, tends to, it just gives it a little bit more of a um, vintage feel. And that's what I wanted. So, okay, let's see. So, one, two, top, bottom. And as it gets fuller, of course, it gets a little bit harder to get in here, but that's okay. You could go with just three. That's fine, too. So, there's that. One, two, three. And here's my last one. Top, bottom. And there we go. All ready. All ready for me to create in. As a matter of fact, I think that might be one of my next videos <laughs> is to create something in this. Isn't that awesome? I love it. Well, here we go. It is all ready to be created in. I'm just going to give this a little tie. And yes, I, I know this string is awfully long, but I don't know how thick this is going to be by the time I'm done with it because I don't know what I'm going to add to it. Okay. There we go. I just added four signatures hand sewn using the, using the pamphlet stitch for my custom keeper. Pretty easy, huh? See, it really isn't that difficult. It really isn't. So go ahead and give it a try. Um, I hope um, I hope I inspired you to go ahead and make some signatures to put in your own personal journal. And um, I hope you're able to, I hope this inspired you to do something creative. So um, as I always end my videos, please remember to be nice, to be kind, it's really, really not that difficult. Have a great day, y'all. Bye-bye.